What is going on everyone? Welcome back to Gibson A Go Go, the show that tells you if it dives on your lap, it'll dive on your strap. So last week I mentioned that I was getting box after box from Zounds. Again, huge thank you to Billy at Zounds uh, for providing the next one we're going to look at. But I mentioned that I had two boxes with Thunderbirds. We picked one at random. It ended up being the non-reverse. So by process of elimination and you reading the thumbnail and title, Today we're going to check out the Gene Simmons G Squared Thunderbird and uh, I haven't opened this yet. I just took this out of the box and I have yet to undo the latches. So thanks to the magic of time travel and video stuff, uh, let's hear a tone first and then we'll get into popping it open. Okay, so right off the bat, a uh, very similar style case. It feels a little smoother, um, handles nice. Same kind of big, thick, bulky latches, but it's all blacked out. So, let's, ooh, the latches actually do feel really nice. So let's pop this guy open. Let me get that trash out of here. Can't have trash for the taping. And there it is. So we've been over the case candy before. So we're just gonna go quicker with it this time. Obviously all blacked out interior, you get the same strap. You get extra threaded inserts for whatever reason. Cool, thank you. Uh, a couple Allen wrenches, uh, same keys, strap, bag. Oh, there goes my do not eat pack. Little bit different warranty card uh, and pre-pack checklist. Cool, looks nice, I'm into it. Baby photo. Also looks like they got a new camera. So good job, uh, Mitsubishi Electric. Okay, so in case that time travel joke didn't make any sense, uh, it's because I have not actually plugged this in or played it yet. I am pulling this out of the case for the first time, despite the fact that you've probably heard two or three different tone samples, which by the way, you're hearing those through the Tech 21 VT Bass rack mount and maybe also the Getty Lee DI 2112 rack mount. VT Bass is set to their SVT preset that's in the manual and the Getty Lee preamp is set to Getty's settings again from the manual. Okay, so right off the bat, uh, no three-point bridge. So we can all rejoice, we've got the hip shot. Uh, spoiler alert, I ordered a chrome one of these for my Thunderbird, my uh, 2019 regular one. We're gonna do a video on that. I've got the chrome and I've got the hip shot ultralight tuners that this also has. These happen to be blacked out, mine are chromed out because I happen to prefer chrome to black. Um, but that's cool, good to know. I'll be able to check out how these work and feel and look. Again, off the bat, pretty light. Um, possibly lighter than the non-reverse, maybe. Like I said, I'm not a good judge of guessing what something weighs. Uh, under 10 pounds? I don't know, I'm gonna put the spec on the screen right here when I find it out in post and I'm guessing I'm gonna guess eight pounds, and then we'll see how good I am at, at, at guessing weight. So we got a little G squared uh, logo on there. Uh, like I said, blacked out hip shot, ultra light mini clovers. Uh, they're doing the cool, unlike the non-reverse, they're doing the traditional T-Bird headstock with a little raised center. Got a clear acrylic mirrored truss rod cover. Different inlays, uh, the binding on the neck looks really good I'm not seeing any I'm not seeing any major flaws if I get nitpicky there's this tiny tool mark there a little tool mark here up at the nut but otherwise you know what I think they did a good job fretboard is could still afford to use some conditioner but not as bad as what we've seen in the past we've got our acrylic mirrored pit guard with the G squared logo a T-bird and this is interesting so in the logo 
we've got a flying V base and a T-bird base and a little cross thing. So potential hint as to what's coming next? I have no idea. Uh, but the rest of the appointments are basic, regular T-bird, two volume, tone, side output, barrel jack, uh, strap buttons are in the places that you would expect. And let's hear how it sounds once more. Okay, so again, off the bat, me sitting here in this moment, I have not heard it plugged in. Um, they appear to be the same pickups that come in the stock T-Bird, so again, I have a pretty good idea of what it's going to sound like through the amp. What I care about is how does it feel right here. And I will say that um, it feels better than last weeks or last episode, whatever the time frame is, the non-reverse T-Bird in Inverness Green that we looked at. This feels better than that. Um, in my opinion, it, it still doesn't live up to the regular T-Bird. I have also noticed that uh, I've got a little lint on it from my shirt there. There we go. It's gone. This is not a neck through instrument as stock regular T-Birds are. T-Bird, of course, being short for Thunderbird. Um, so this looks like it is your regular, you know, Les Paul, SG, Explorer, etc. glued in, set neck, neck joint. Now I will say the binding on the neck is a very nice touch and the binding on the body is a very nice touch. So I, for me personally, I totally dig the aesthetic of this bass. Um, I wish it would. I wish it was the neck through construction. Uh, I do want to look up online on the spec to make sure I don't get anything wrong here. Okay, body shape: Thunderbird body material, mahogany binding, multi ply top, single ply fretboard. Yep, it is multi ply. That's cool. I love the multi ply binding, like the way like Les Paul Customs do it. So cool. Uh, gloss nitrocellulose lacquer finish, mahogany neck, rounded profile, 34 inches, ebony fingerboard. This is a question that I brought up in a previous one. Is it ebony wood or is it darkened rosewood that they can call ebony? No, that looks like ebony wood to me. Okay, I retract what I just said. 1.6 inch nut width again, so we're getting a little away from stock T-Bird. Electronics. I touched on this in the last episode, how it said Thunderbird Rhythm and Thunderbird Lead. These say Rhythm T-Bird, Lead T-Bird. So we've swapped the words and we've shortened Thunderbird into T-Bird. Are they different pickups or are they the same pickups? I have no idea. Uh, 45 to 105 strings, modern hard shell Gibson case, Gibson accessory kit. Okay, oh, and as of April 25th, 2022, these go brand new for $27.99. Okay, so if you're like me, you're probably not like me, but maybe. I, I've loved Kiss since I was like nine years old. That was my first show ever. I saw him in 2000. It was the, the, the first farewell tour with all four original members, Gene, Paul, Ace, and Peter. Um, so since then, I've been, I've been quite a Kiss fan. I own just about their entire discography. 
Uh, there's a place here in Vegas, Kiss Mini Golf, that I frequent. They have the door from the Elder. They have Eric Carr's 1981 Porsche. And just a bunch of memorabilia. The original pinball machine, the new pinball machine, a bunch of autograph stuff. It's a fun place to go. It's at the Rio Hotel. If you're ever in town, go check it out. Um, when Gibson announced the partnership with Gene, I was tremendously ecstatic because, like maybe most of you out there, I thought, cool, we're getting a grabber. We're getting a ripper. We're getting... Something that we can't otherwise get in the Gibson lineup, which at the time consisted of SG Base, T Bird, LP Jr., I think that's it. Um, and then they dropped this bomb on us. Uh, granted, this is coming from someone who loves Gibson and loves Thunderbirds. I don't like this uh, that much. It, I mean, it feels fine, like, there's nothing wrong with the instrument. I think it's just because it's my own fault that I assumed it was going to be something that it wasn't. But putting that aside, okay, let's just wrap our heads around that it's a Gene Simmons Thunderbird. The good news, we got a sweet hip shot bridge and sweet hip shot ultralight tuners. Love it. Uh, we've changed the aesthetic up. We've changed the fretboard wood, the inlays, the pick guard. Uh, that seems to be about it. But again, love it. That's All these changes are really cool. I'm in. But outside of that, and and well, then the other negative change is set neck. I would have loved it to be a neck through, but we'll we'll pretend that that's not a thing just for a minute. Um, these pickups. Not that they're bad pickups, of course. Um, I swapped mine out in mine not because they sounded bad. It's because I didn't like the resonant frequency and you know the resonant peak the way it interacted with distortion when I needed distortion I didn't like how that sounded so that's why I swapped them clean tone this straight into like an Ampeg SVT these are these are great pickups I got really I got really nothing bad to say about them objectively speaking they just didn't work for me but that's neither here nor there point being Gene uses EMG pickups in his axe bass his Punisher bass I think those are the main two he plays, but like he uses EMG, the PJ set, right? So Gene is an EMG artist, as am I now, I get to say, that's awesome. But at least put EMG pick, like do something different that's not just aesthetic and hardware. Like, you know, people try to accuse a lot of people, I think mostly Gene, of being kind of the cash grab guy. And that's kind of the case here, a little bit, um, a little bit. It's not 100% stock T-Bird, but we're not, we didn't jump far away. Like, like okay, I, I realize I'm not really anybody special. I didn't write Detroit Rock City, and I'm, you know, but just hypothetically speaking, if, if Gibson said, hey, we want to do a signature Thunderbird with you, um, I would make a point to do something dramatically different that you couldn't get you know because again like with this bass yes we've talked about it, it looks awesome but if your eyes are closed this is a thunderbird like save yourself 500 bucks and get the stock one that's neck through and, and you're gonna be having a good time as much as you would with this one so i would make it a point if i had a signature model i want it to be different whether your eyes are open or closed i'd put you know i would say fuck it let's go three emg soap bars the push pull ones Let's just do something dramatically different with it that you can't get, you know. Um, that's just spitballing. I'd, I'd put more thought into it, of course. But I just, I don't know. I guess I don't like that eyes closed. This is just a T-Bird. There's nothing, there's nothing different about the electronics. I love the bridge. I love the pickups. And I love the look. And that's all I can say about it. But for 500 extra dollars, I don't know. Is that, is that enough for me to drop at $500 extra dollars when I could do this myself? I don't know. But here's another tone. So again, to just put it quickly, objectively speaking, this bass is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I just wish that they would have used this opportunity to re-release something discontinued or make something totally, completely brand new that didn't already exist in the catalog. So that's all I'm trying to say. Now, 
I know you might be thinking, hey, you're such a Gibson fan. Why are, why are these last two videos more negative than positive? Well, there's two reasons. One, uh, you know, a little bit of anxiety of like, not wanting to get written off as, as being a fanboy if I have a thought. You know, well, of course you think that because you just love them. No, dude, having something be your favorite doesn't mean it's not flawed in places. You know, I have no problem calling out a flaw or something that I dislike about it when applicable. I happen to like this company and I happen to like most of what they do. That doesn't mean they're perfect. That doesn't mean they can do no wrong. Um, so, you know, that's one. And then B, I just, I just want to be as honest as possible. I'm not, I'm not trying to sell you on, on any of this stuff. Uh, the point of Gibson to go, go is so I have an outlet to just share the things that I like and I like Gibson. Um, I, I mean, I, I like this Gibson and I like the last Gibson, but there's better ones. They, they've been my least favorite of all of the ones that we've looked at. So point being, I'm not, I'm not trying to tell you, go out and get this right now. It's awesome. And I don't want to tell you to avoid it because there's a couple things that I'm disappointed in, like the set neck, I'm a little disappointed. I'm a little disappointed that the pickups are the same, but I don't want that to be a reason for you to go, oh, I'm not gonna buy. I don't wanna tell you what to do at all. Like, if you love Gene Simmons and you really like this bass and you love the look, and it then I would say go for it. I don't think there's anything, again, objectively wrong with it. Uh, there's no bait and switch type of deal other than maybe the neck join, but they, they let you know on the website, so it's not bait and switch. Yeah, I guess that's the thing, that's the tough thing to separate, is separating what is good and what is bad and what is your particular cup of coffee, you know? This one is closer to my particular cup of coffee than the, than the non-reverse one was, but I'll still take the stock T-Bird uh, every day, um, which we're gonna see that coming up, like I mentioned with the tuners and the bridge install, and I'm gonna talk about some of the other mods that I've done to kind of make it fit me a little better. But until then, um, this has been Gibson and Gogo on the base channel, and this has been the Gene Simmons G squared Thunderbird in ebony with mirror pickguard, however, whatever the hell they're calling it. I will say the case was really nice. They did a good job building it. Um, I wish it was heavier. So all in all, cool maybe not for me i wouldn't particularly buy it but that doesn't mean you should not so let this just help your decision along not make it for you um so again like it subscribe dislike it share it uh tell me what you thought down below and until next time um be safe and i will see you god damn it i hate ending these i'll see you later